So we've got to look for employment opportunities within the non-tradable sector. And there, the one sector that does look promising, to my mind, is the construction sector. Um, and the construction sector is promising because, uh, in a, especially in a post-conflict setting, um, which we know to be rather fragile on average, in post-conflict settings, the core business is reconstruction. A flood of aid money comes in to reconstruct the economy. Uh, and so potentially, there are lots of jobs in the construction sector. Uh, unfortunately, um, very often, the sector doesn't generate a lot of jobs. And that, that's partly because uh, the sector, uh, during periods of conflict, has shrunk, has shriveled away. And so there isn't the, the base of skills and firms. And so to the extent that construction happens in the economy, it's done by foreigners. Angola, 80,000 Chinese. South Sudan, being, Juba being built by young Ethiopians, Ugandans, Kenyans, not by South Sudanese. Um, so that's, uh, that's part of the problem. Uh, a further part of the problem is that the construction sector becomes a bottleneck. Uh, in effect, there's a very steep supply curve that, uh, that the construction sector is characterized by. And so the big injection of demand for construction just drives up unit costs rather than uh, employment and output. And so policies that can flatten the supply curve, curve in the construction sector, I think, uh, have a double benefit. They directly enable reconstruction to happen faster and uh, they enable uh, growth of employment in a, in, a, in a sector that is a prime candidate for jobs generation.